I usually put one or two pinks in at a time. I mean, you can put more in. I usually do one or two at a time, depending. But I do have little kids in the house. So I don't want to put so many in there that if somebody spills my beads and I freak out. But I don't want to be like getting up and down ten different times either. Just to do a couple hours worth of beadwork. So this is just how I do it. And you'll kind of find your own little stuff that works for you. You know? And there's always going to be somebody that says, oh, you're doing it wrong. But I wouldn't really listen as long as you like it. And your, your kids or your husband or whoever you're beating for likes it, then that's really all that matters anyway. Generally, they tell you that you're doing it wrong if, if they make and sell stuff and they just kind of want your business. So I just blow that part off. And I think, you know, the reason I like doing this is because, you know, we've all seen especially Osage clothes, we've all seen stuff that's like, you know, as your grandmother's or your great-grandmother's or, or whatever, and it's like that stuff doesn't go away. We keep using it. And so, you know, if I put a month in or a couple months in to make something for my kids, you know, I can kind of justify all of that time because I know it's not just going to be for them. I know their kids might wear it or their grandkids. And I think more importantly... What I really like knowing is that long after I'm gone, there's going to be something really beautiful under the arbor that's like a part of me, something that I made. And so even if I'm not physically there, I'm still going to be there. And that's just a really good feeling. And it, you know, when you buy stuff, it's not the same. You don't get that same special feeling. And, you know, in June when I sit on my bench and I'm, I'm looking around and I see my daughters with stuff that I've made for them and my nephews and my nieces, your chest kind of swells. You get real proud and you get happy. And you see a part of yourself out there and you know it's going to be out there for a very long time. Okay, so I'm standing back in this hole now because I have to wear my glasses to show you this. And... Well, you know, there's a glare in the camera and all that, so it looks a little funky. So I'm going to, here's my glasses. I can't see. Let's do this thing. This is like the hardest part for me because I can't see. Just kind of woke up one day when I was 42 and I was like, oh my God, I can't see the holes and the beads. So now we have bifocals and... I can see and I'm gonna be good and not bite my thread because this is gonna show but usually I just bite it we don't get too fancy around here really I mean we like to have fancy Indian clothes but our methods aren't always perfect And I always, I don't know, this is just me being paranoid and making stuff for little kids for so long. I usually tie three knots in everything just to make sure that it's going to hold. I mean, even when I do their neck beads, there's like three knots every, all the time because I don't want anything to fall apart. Especially when they're out there dancing. It freak me out. I put three knots in there and then I'm just, I'm coming up here. like so and see this one's like all nice and pristine usually after I'm working on something for like a week and Nettie's grabbed a hold of it and stuff these get all ripped and I have to figure out what the heck I was doing so yeah now when I'm doing stuff real curvy like this pattern I usually only do two beads at a time and then when I do more straight stuff like that eight pointed star then I usually will do like four beads at a time so what we do is we're putting two beads on there, and I'm going down a little ways. Ow, I stab myself, because I can't see. Okay, I should have cleaned my glasses before we started. 
Okay, so there you go. Got two beads down. And then I come back up, kind of like a little bit beside this first bead. But you want to make sure you're still in that black line. See? Are you zoomed in? Okay, you kind of want you want to come back in through the line because you don't want to be like all over the place or you don't want your stitches to show after you get your beadwork done. So you come up back up next to that first bead. And then you go through the second bead. And I don't really think you have to use tissue paper either for your pattern. I use it because that way when I get done I can just tear it off and it's like not a big deal. So there's your first two. All right. Then we're going to do it again. Two beads. We'll go up about this far right here. I should have done my nails before we did this. It would be so much cooler. And you want to get your thread long enough where you don't have to keep tying it off like all the time, but if you get it way too long, then you just are asking for knots and a headache, so I wouldn't get too crazy. Okay, now I'm gonna come back up next to that first bead that I just put on there, like that. One more time. We're going to go down two beads. And just give it a little bit of space. And so, yeah, some people use two beads and they like lay it down and then tack it down. And that's just a lot for me to keep up with and not get knots and bend needles and all kinds of stuff. This is, like I said, this works better for me. So, this is the way I do it. And I know my three cut beads aren't like all perfectly the same, but they're really shiny and pretty, especially when you get under those lights at powwows and stuff. They're really cool. I don't really have to do the rhinestone thing. Sarah, do you think it's going to be pretty? Mm -hmm. I'm excited. And this whole thing is really fake because I never sit at the dining room table to bead. I think that's why it's taken me so long to do this how-to thing for you guys because Usually, the way I like to beat is I put on a movie, and I get in my ugly jammy pants, and no makeup, and a ponytail, and I go sit in the bed, and I watch movies and bead. So, but I don't want to be all, like, rugged for you guys, so. And just kind of, like, you know, do this with your finger, like, your, and pull your string, and, like, that'll kind of help it curve and get all where it needs to go. And you always want it to be tight. You want your beadwork to be tight, but you don't want it to be so tight that it puckers the material. Because, you know, that would look really terrible on your skirt if you had little pockets of just jacked up material. So, 